uh, Internet Viewer World. Welcome to the Billabong Pro Mundaka 2006. We're bringing you heat number two of round three. Bruce Irons and Luke Stedman. Uh, two quite different surfers, Dino, aren't they? Absolutely. You know, uh, geez, after that last heat, let's hope for some action in this one. There's definitely some uh, great two biting uh, by Joel Parkinson in that last heat. Amazing waves he had there, Nick. Oh, yeah. Well, you can see there the two surfers in this heat. Bruce uh, from Kauai, uh, one of the world's most um, deft and uh, elegant surfers. Um, really graceful, incredible wave judgment, uh, loves critical heavy waves uh, where he just seems to keep getting more and more relaxed as the waves get thicker. And uh, I'm sure he's going to put on a show here at Mandaka. Absolutely. He's, he's able to really uh, crunch himself into a small little ball and uh, at the same time pump through the barrels. So we'll have to wait and see if any uh, waves are served up for the, the young Bruce Irons from Kauai. You bet. And, uh, well, I'll get a bit of relief here too. The competition director, Mike Parsons, has come to, to join Dino in the commentary booth. And, and Mike, I'm sure you're watching every... Uh, every moment of that uh, Parco versus Jared House clash and uh, if you enjoyed it as much as we did then uh, you'll have something to say about it I'd reckon. Oh thanks Nick, yeah of course, I mean that's what we all came here to see. Incredible waves here this morning at Mundaka and uh, the tides turned and the surf's gotten absolutely perfect when the sets come. Do you know that that uh, she sat last night we were up in the judges tower everyone was pretty excited on some of those waves of Joel and Jared House, just incredible backside tube riding. The, the one that's the second big score of Joel is one of the most talented backside tube rides I've ever seen. When you saw the water angle, how he was pumping through the barrel and able to get out that last section was just incredible. And then the one he didn't come out, the, the body surf shot of him was incredible. <laughs> he was body yeah. surfing in the barrel. I mean, let's break it down. I mean, that was brilliant surfing from Joel Parkinson. I mean, he, uh, he picked all the right waves, and, and nonetheless, on top of that, he, he really seemed to you know, almost do the impossible, pumping through those sections, and, and you know, the, his first wave, he I mean, must hit the lip about seven times after that first tube. Yeah, it must have been uh, pretty tough to keep your composure. You come out of a barrel like that, and, and to go ahead and rack off five or six huge off the tops. So he had three waves, you know, in the, uh, you know, high nines above a nine five, and uh, but I think maybe the second one was, you know, e each of those three exchanges, at least one of the judges went with a 10. You know, what's it going to take to see a perfect 10 out here? <laughs> I know, I thought that third one was going to be a 10, and it ended up being a 9.4. You know, obviously the judges, you know, had their eyes uh, well, set I think on that, a... I think that one in particular, the third long one, you could, if you want to get critical, you could see him a, a little bit of the time. He wasn't completely gone for part of that tube ride. But what about the Nixon tube time? Do you think he's in the lead for that now with one of those ways? <laughs> I think he might have been in the lead three times over. But, uh, you know, I think, you know, it was interesting, the beginning of that heat, um, at the beginning of that heat, you know, Jared House was the deepest on the point, and, um, you know, he he opted to go on that first wave, which was a closeout. He didn't really have much opportunity, and then right behind it, Joel, you know, obviously was in rhythm. You know, he started off with that first wave, but just think if Jared wouldn't have went on that first wave and, and yeah, would have went on the second wave. You know, yeah, would have been a different case scenario there. Well, that's a really good point. I mean, the rhythm uh, is everything when you're in a man-on-man -man heat. It's basically like a chess match, and uh, Parker with the better of that first exchange. And like you said, Jer how would Jared House have known that that second bomb was right behind it? But Joel, he's a, he's a bit of a mystery man in the water. He always seems to be that guy, like places like Jay Bay. I remember one time he rode all the way through the lineup and got out at the end of the beach and actually walked back through the town. <laughs> yeah, with nine only, minutes left. The only one to make it through Impossibles. So, Joel's one of those guys you can't take your eyes off. He's going to do something exciting every time he paddles out. So, I think, uh, Dino, I think we've got GT down there. He's with Joel Parkinson, winner of the last heat. I'm curious to hear what uh, Joel has to say. Take it away. Well, uh, talk about starting that round off with a bang. Wow. Throwing away, I think he threw away a 9 4 in that heat. Yeah, that's a, that's a rare one. Uh, that was, you know, one of the most ridiculous heats I've ever. Uh, you know, I've ever been in. Um, probably the best waves I've, you know, I've ever surfed a heat in. I was unbelievable freight train barrels, you know. It, was, it wasn't big, but it was just, you could toy with it in a way. Well, it's kind of like Snapper going left, huh? Well, it's better than Snapper. That was ah. unbelievable. Now, 
you know, you, you're out there. The heat before, let's face, was a little kind of short of waves. I mean, there was really only one or two scoreable waves there. And you jump in, and be, you and Klaus just uh, kind of put some pixie dust on that thing or something. Yeah, I don't know. It just turned. Um, you know, I mean, Docker, everyone knows it. It ch changes and starts up and just goes off for half an hour and then turns off. And uh, I've been wondering all day whether I'd be the one who'd get a great heat. I knew some point today there was going to be an unbelievable heat. And, um, yeah, I hate that. I'm, like, a little bit uh, speechless after the, them barrels. I'm trying to put them two in my head. Well, you can go inside and watch the replays because I'm sorry I was a little late to the to interview because we were in awe that some of the water angles are just incredible. And you're aware there that there is a $10,000 watch on the line, the Nixon Tube Top Award. Uh, I, if I was a betting man, I'd say you're the front runner at this point. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. What, uh, I'm right now the watch is whatever, but I'm just uh, I'm baffled that you know we're lucky enough to have uh, heats in waves like that. You know. Um, it was a, pretty much a dream surf, let alone a dream session with it. And it you know, I didn't really even notice I had this thing on, so, uh, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> okay, now, you know, earlier in the week we were talking, your old man, you know, sent you over an email, something about your backhand. Do you have an answer for him? Yeah. Now my dad gave me a text on my phone and said, uh, you're starting to improve on your backhand, son. <laughs> you know what I said? I just thought, <laughs> too many old dry sides are here, my old man, and flight just straight to the port and, uh, I was just joking with him, and I said thanks for the tip, and, yeah, so. You proved him right. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> well done, Joe. All right, we'll go back to the tower where uh, Dino and uh, Snipsy Russell and Mike Parsons have taken the set. Congratulations, Joe. Thanks, I'm going to let it sink in now. Yeah, thanks for that, GT, and comments there from uh, Joel Parkinson. Obviously very stoked, Dino. He actually said that was some of, if not the best surf he's ever had in a heat uh, in his career, that's a pretty big call coming from him. That's a huge statement. And, uh, well, it seems like uh, Joel's, uh, you know, carrying on where he left off last week, you know, with uh, just blistering form, uh, just seeming to be right in the right spot at the right time and utilizing every uh, opportunity he had. Yeah. yeah, just incredible backside, too, riding. For all the Groms out there watching online, that's pretty much how you do it, huh? you know, just <laughs> pumping through the barrel, I mean, just perfect style, and then able to keep the composure, like we said, when he came out and did a few beautiful turns, and, you know, this wave, Mundaka, when it, at the right moment on the right tide, obviously, uh, absolutely one of the best waves in the world we've just saw in the last two. Yeah, he's, uh, well, I guess he's the first one, you know, to, uh, out of the top five that are going for the title. So we uh, see on the water right now, Dino, on the screen is uh, Bruce Irons from Hawaii, of course. He's up against Luke uh, Stedman from Australia. These guys have had a slow start. Uh, we're uh, about five minutes into the heat, and nothing's come through. Obviously, they saw that last heat of uh, Joel, and no doubt are hoping to get two breaths. We have had the conditions change just a little teeny bit, Dino. There's a, we're watching, hoping an onshore breeze doesn't reach the lineup, because outside near the island, there's a slight little onshore breeze. So... These guys waiting patiently to get on the board. Of course, once again, it is uh, Bruce Irons up against Luke Stedman. Well, you know, Bruce, he's another one of those crazy tube riders. You know, and, and given the opportunity, I'm sure he'll uh, definitely uh, pig dog across this point here. And uh, Luke Stedman's another guy that's an interesting competitor. He seems to always be in the right spot as well. He's uh, got a really good wave knowledge about him. He seems to always um, pick the right waves. And he's a really yeah. savvy uh, competitor. Yeah, I think he's a great competitor. That's a really good point. He uh, does really w well in a lot of the WQS events, wins a fair few of those, and a super savvy competitor. That's a, probably a really good choice of words for him. And he's got his hands full of Bruce Irons. No question, Dino, when you talk about backside tube riding, Bruce is on the really short list of the very best in the world. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's pretty interesting, interesting that uh, Bruce is right after Joel. You know, they've been hanging out every day together. They're really close friends, and... You know, Bruce is probably thinking, wow, I hope I get a couple of ways like the ones Joel had. Yeah, I think maybe Joel <laughs> used them all up, huh? Because we haven't seen anything yet in this heat. And, uh, well, it was a tough decision. We were up there, you know, it's, it's been uh, pretty hard calls with heat times and when to run. We tried to run this morning when the, when the uh, river was really flowing out. We had to put it on hold for an hour. And uh, we were just discussing up in the top whether to knock them back to 25-minute heats because we got an incoming tide and there were so many waves in the last heat. Uh, but we thought better of it in the last second and kept him to 30 minutes. And, and judging by the start of this heat, I'm sure glad we did. Absolutely. Uh, 
you know, you look at the, the heat draw moving forward, and there's some really close heats coming up here, a lot of uh, really big matchups. Yeah, a lot on the line here, of course, coming up next is uh, C.J. Hobgood. He'll be up against Victor Rebus, who in the first heat this morning scored a nine-point wave. And uh, beyond that, we'll see uh, Mick Fanning up against Toby Martin, so that'll be a great eight. So we're online here. Dino, say hi to the crew at home. Hope everyone's <laughs> enjoying the webcast. We're sure enjoying ourselves here in uh, Mundaka. Beautiful day, Dino. The sun out, offshore wind, and, well, it's a bit tough to watch after a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting blessed once again, Mike, you know. Uh, you guys made a great call this morning, uh, holding it back, and then you, you seemed like you started right at the right time. And uh, unfortunate for uh, Chris Ward and Nathan Hedge, they didn't have much opportunity, but, boy, right after that heat was over, it just turned on for uh, Joel's heat. And, yeah, and uh, Warner looked really good, though, on his opening wave. He had a, a high seven. He looked really on on his backside. And we knew that was going to be a tough heat, both those guys on that bubble mark. You know, you talk about the ratings and some of these guys, you know, it's obvious that the world title race is narrowing down. But all these guys are trying to requalify. And Wardo and Hedge, he's sitting right around that 28 and, and uh, in that zone of the ratings, and all these guys trying to make that top 28 to qualify for next year, and that was a big win for Chris Ward. Absolutely. You know, Chris Ward's been plagued with tons of in injuries, and it's really good to see him getting his form back. He seems like he's, he's trimmed up a bit, and he's looking light on his feet and fast, and uh, looks like Bruce Irons is taking off out the back, Mike. Yeah, he's pulled into a little barrel here, a nice little pocket. He's covered up. You can see the tide filling in already, Dino, you know, a few little chandeliers there. Uh, what we call chandeliers in the top of the wave coming down, just mushing it out on Bruce. So, you know, if Bruce doesn't come out of the tube, you know it's uh, probably the wave wasn't going to let him. <laughs> well, they might have to change their strategy, strategy as, the, as this heat, you know, unfolds. It might be more about turns as the tide rolls in a bit. It's, it's going to go back to turns. That's a, a good point. Um, you know, each heat has its own characteristics. You know, the tide turns. It's going to change every single time. No two heats we've seen in this whole contest have been even close to, to similar, you know. So uh, that's a good point. I think they're going to have to go more to turns here, especially in the next heat. We're probably still going to see a barrel or two in this heat. But as the tide fills up, you know, to a 15-foot high at about uh, 630 tonight, which it'll actually swamp the entire surf, and we won't be able to surf late today. At some point, uh, we'll have to stop, but we are going to go as far as we possibly can here in uh, round number three. That's amazing if you think about that, that kind of tidal swing. I mean... Uh, for all you view viewers watching online at home, um, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy how much the tide plays a part in, in this wave. I mean, it'll bre be breaking in dry water, you know, two hours after, you know, after it's dry. I mean, it's, it just changes it well, so could, many times throughout the day. Could you imagine if you walked up this morning and looked at it at 6 in the morning and then you would have walked up three hours later and saw Parco's rides? You would have thought, wait a minute, this is like a time warp. I'm in a completely different place. It was dead flat this morning, way too much tide on the bank. Three hours later, Joel Parkinson's claiming it was the best heat he's ever had in his life for conditions. Yeah, it was a great call, you know. Um, it's good to get that information from Sean Collins at Surfline. He's uh, been on, on the pulse here with giving us daily reports and and once again, you know, you guys nailed it up, you know, up, up top, waited for that tide to slow down a bit. It was rushing out so so fast earlier that the guys couldn't even stay in the lineup and then kind of slowed down just enough to uh, get those last few heats off and they were great heats. Yeah, it's really difficult here trying to time it and uh, this morning was the most difficult when you had that river pouring out. We had uh, a bunch of the surfers come up to the tower. We were actually considering having the jet skis tow the surfers back in to try to stay into the lineup. So Really, you know, every heat, like we've been saying, testing conditions here in Mundaka, but the last heat was, if we could just freeze the tide, you know, right on that tide all day with those winds, it would be perfect all day. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the winds uh, slowed down a bit, too, you know, and, and during Joel's heat, it had a you know, pretty brisk offshore wind that was kind of holding those, those barrels open. Yeah, it's a little bit of an onshore flow now, so I think we're going to see the guys uh, kind of resort more to turns, like you said, in the seat. Just one short ride. We don't have the scores in front of us just yet. Uh, but it wasn't wasn't much of a ride for uh, Bruce Irons. Just a quick uh, up and down there as he got closed out in the barrel. And this heat really a slow start. Do you know what happens with the ASP rules? You know it's a 30 minute heat, and if someone didn't ride a wave in the first 15 minutes, the head judge, who's uh, Perry Hatchett from Western Australia, he will decide. You know, 
if he feels like there was no opportunities for anyone to go, he'll actually restart the heat, and the surfers will get a whole 30 minutes over again. So the fact that Bruce Irons stood up on that wave, he got the heat started, and uh, now it's another long lull. Let's hope for a set. Yeah, and, and looking at the draw, Mike, I mean, if you look at the draw, you have two of the top five surfers in the world that are going for the world title in that top four heats. I mean, obviously, Joel Parkinson in heat number one just blistering his way through to round number four, and it looks like Bruce Irons is up out the back, Mike. Yeah, he's, he's gone to a floater there, and he gets stuck behind and falls off. Now, Luke Stedman, of course, has priority. He's yet to open, and uh, we see the slight onshore crumble starting to show up here. Bruce has taken a look. He's wider, and uh, let's see if Bruce can jump on this Dino down on the end and do a few nice turns. Well, there he goes. He's pumping down the line. Big old floater, and uh, kind of just... Looked like a jokingly uh, dive off there. <laughs> yeah, there's no way he was getting around that. Still, you know, on this mid tide, that section a little too fast for Bruce to get around. So, what a contrast here. You know, the last heat with uh, nine point rides to spare. This heat, you know, the onshore's on it now. We're not going to see, we may see a few good tubes, but we're not going to see the tube riding that we saw from Joel in the last heat, despite the fact that we have uh, two of the world's best surfers out there right now. The, the waves aren't going to let it happen. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, Definitely going to change, as it always does. Every every uh, 15 minutes, it's a new strategy you have to come to, to play with here. And getting back to what we were saying about the draw here, it looks like um, there are two two surfers in the top five in this in these first four heats of round three. And, you know, as well as uh, C.J. Hobgood, who's in round number three, heat three, and Bruce Irons, who's currently in the water at the moment against Luke Stedman. So that first four heats jam-packed with talent and, and a, a lot at stake, wouldn't you say, Mike? Well, for sure, and if you look at the draw, I mean, you know, you could argue, Dino, that the two most uh, informed surfers, uh, you know, obviously at the last event they were because they were both in the final, was Joel Parkinson, who we just saw in the last heat, and, and Mick Fanning, who's coming up in heat four. And it uh, looks like we will probably get to, uh, to Fanning's heat here uh, just based on the tide and the amount of swell. So uh, a couple of those contenders coming up uh, over the next few hours. Of course, uh, Andy Irons and Kelly Slater are in heat eight and nine. So it's probably a coin toss whether we'll 50-50 chance of getting to those heats. I'm not too sure. We'll just have to check the conditions. But uh, everyone watching real close right now is, you know, Parco's kind of uh, been the man to beat uh, here in Europe so far. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> those guys are, you know, if you think about it, uh, Mick Fanning and Joel Parkinson, close friends, and uh, but bitter rivalries in the water, you know, and, and last last week they had a final together, and uh, earlier in the year they had a heat, a quarterfinal heat at, at Bells Beach that was real close as well, and it, and it seems like, you know, when they hit the water, they're, they're definitely uh, going at each other pretty hard. Yeah, <laughs> all business over here for those two, and... Uh, well, Bruce in the water right now, he had a, a great tube ride in his uh, heat the other day, Dino, when the conditions were a bit lumpy and bumpy, and it was really difficult uh, to make your way through the sections. We saw Bruce with one of the best tubes of uh, the event before today. So, Well, you can always bet on Bruce to, to be going for the barrel if there is one. It looks like there's a set out the back, Mike. Yeah, Luke Stedman's got priority here. He's on a bomb of a wave. Drops in, grabs his rail. You can see the water angle we're looking at. Pulls in the barrel. He's driving through it. He wills his way out of that, but he's not going to get around the section. Oh, he pops out, though. Uh, you know, he pulls yeah. out the front there. He did a little doggy bear. Did really well to get out. Now, here goes Bruce, Dino. And Bruce is in the barrel. Oh, it looks like Bruce is coming out, Mike. Wow. Yeah, great floater. This is going to be a really big score for Bruce Irons. He did so well to get out of that tube, and now he's just going to town here, Dino. Oh, man, how's that backside snap right there for Bruce Irons? Man, uh, he plowed his way through that section. Amazing uh, tube technique from the, the young Kauaian, Bruce Irons. Yeah, that's, that's how you do it. Uh, just incredible surfing. Bruce Irons, you can see right now a nice shot of him getting picked up. That's Gary Elkerton on the ski. He's going to race him around the bank here. At Mundaka, you see Bruce jump up on the ski there, grab a hold. They're taking off. They're going to go around the sandbar. And, uh, Dino, I'm, I'm uh, going to go out on a limb and say that was a really big score for Bruce. <laughs> I mean, if you assess the conditions now, which you have every heat, the judges have to reassess the conditions to say, you know, what's an excellent scoring wave? The conditions have changed. It's on shore. And uh, that wave's going to be, it's going to be in the nines, I'm, I'm saying, because the conditions have changed. In the, in the heat previous, it might have only been a seven because of all the, it wasn't as clean of a tube as uh, Joel, but as Joel's. But for the conditions now, that's going to be an excellent score for Bruce. That way was pretty surprising. I mean, you know, f for having a little bit of hunch or win, it still, you know, held its composure and was pretty hollow. 
he he really uh he made the most out of that opportunity. Yeah, and he did everything he could possibly do on that wave. And uh, so we're going to cut to the uh, replay here for you viewers online, and let's check out Luke Stedman's uh, angle from the water. Incredible images we're getting, Dino, from the uh, boat in the channel here at Mundaka. And uh, they're looking straight into the barrel. And that one, too, but Joel's we saw earlier, was, it was the one he didn't make was insane because what you couldn't see from where we were watching the judges' tower was he was actually having a full-on body bash after he <laughs> fell off the wave. The yeah. guy was having that much fun. He was body surfing it. Yeah, he, he definitely looks like uh, the surfer that has the most fun. He seems to always be smiling. It's like you, could, you can almost visualize his face when he's on the wave just with a big old grin as he's uh, doing a big carver in the barrel. Yeah, I mean, every surfer loves to get barreled. How could you not be smiling the way he was getting those tubes? But uh, we're looking at the shot right now. Luke Stedman, he's he's uh, kicking back, and here he goes. Dino, you know, take us through this uh, barrel. It's a little more crumbly. Yeah, it looks like he, he takes off there, and obviously he's, a, he's stalling, waiting for the tube to come over there. And he's he, it looks like right there, the little little chandelier hits him in the in the head as he's still trying to pump, but not able to really pull through that. That last whitewater section just coming down right on top of him, not really allowing him to, to push through that section, Mike. Yeah, but he was able to hang on here and doggy door that thing, and he pops out clean, you know. So uh, we don't have the scores in front of us right this second, but but he did everything he could possibly do to, to get a bit of a score out of that. Yeah, he actually kind of fooled me. I didn't think he was going to pop out the front of it, you know, from our angle. But uh, I think that, you know, with Bruce on the way out the back, on that exchange, he kind of stole a little of the thunder, you know. He, yeah, exactly. Bruce, Bruce, he, he, Bruce, somehow, his wave allowed him to, to get a little bit more tube, and then he ended up hitting the lip like three times after, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, here's the replay of Bruce's that you're just talking about. You know, this is the angle from uh, the beach here on the tower. I mean, look at that. Pulls in, it's completely gone, comes out clean, avoids a little chandelier there as it, it unfolds on him. And right here he does it beautiful rock and roll floater look at all that speed positioning just just beautiful surfing to watch Bruce Irons completely in control big snaps with a tube everything in the judging criteria and that's going to be a big score well it looks like Bruce Irons at the back Mike yeah here he goes he's a couple of nice turns here he's going to town on this wave as well looks real comfortable nice little floater glides around that jumps up on the lip again and what he's doing here do you know I think this that was really smart surfing he has the big score and uh, he just backed it up with a with a, a medium score, but solid surfing, and he's going to put himself in a commanding position with that wave. Yeah, I, I mean, you have to you have to think that with a with a nine point ride or whatever that first wave was, to be able to back it up with that score, with the conditions, uh, you know, the tide coming in, you might have to think that he's definitely going to put Luke Stedman in a in a difficult situation. Well, I'd like to to welcome all you spectators around the world online. This is the 2006 Billabong Pro, and as we watch this replay, Mike, he uh, just floats that thing right there, and you know, he's got a really interesting style. He, 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 seem, he seems to have his head always down the line while his hips and, and lower body push through the maneuver. Yeah, it's a really good point. Look at where he's focusing down the line. Look at his eyes. All that focus, he's always looking what's next. You know, these surfers are one step ahead on every maneuver. Bruce, beautiful series of uh, backside floaters there, jumps off the lip, free falls. I mean, how is that landing and control? And just so much composure. Just really composed, yeah. really composed on that wave. The kid from Kauai, Bruce Irons, you know, obviously he's got his brother, Andy Irons, to, to push him throughout their, their whole upbringing and, you know, surfing the waves they have in Kauai their whole life. And uh, obviously, tons of visits to, to the North Shore of Oahu surfing pipeline. Yeah, you know, and uh, we've got uh, GT down there. We're going to cut to GT and get an update, you know. Come on over there. Check this out. Just trying to break into the old mixing display here. And um, we've been talking about after that last heat with Joe Parkinson. We've been talking about the Nixon Tube Time Award. And um, this is the prize right here. Come on in here, Carlos. This is a one-of-a-kind watch. It's a ceramic, I believe, um, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's a ceramic player, and it's set with three diamonds, three emeralds, and three rubies to signify the Basque Country. And this watch is going to be awarded to the surfer who gets the longest bell of the event. And right now, we're proud of Joe Parkinson's heat. You can see that. Uh, you probably can't see that, but I'm going to tell you. 
Tom Woods was up with a uh, four-second barrel. Dre had it with a 3.5, and then Bruce and his heat uh, earlier in the first round um, had a three-second barrel. That was when he came from behind and won uh, Chris Wood in the heat. But anyways, I have a feeling that they're going to be uh, having a hard time deciding which one of Joe Parkinson's wave is the uh, contender. And I, I would have counted it to uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of seven to eight seconds. Um, if we're on trial right now, we're in that kind of VIP area. Um, and basically, with five minutes left in the heat, maybe we can um, we can uh, basically talk about this zone here real quick and let the surfer catch the wave. But this is where all the kind of important people hang out. So notice I don't hang out here very often. But um, we have food bar, we have a coffee bar, the live squares are running, a few of the surfers are lurking about, or actually they look like they're out there as soon as I got on camera. Down the way I was earlier was uh, Nick Lowe, Nathan Hedge, Dan Ravity, uh, Ace Packin was just here. But anyways, so this is the chill spot if you're chill. And I'm not that chill. So uh, we'll throw it back to uh, Mike and Dino and... Um, you know, hey, trying to get that $10,000 watch ain't easy. They got this thing padlocked. So, Mike, Snipsy, and uh, Dino, back to you guys. <laughs> Thanks, GT. That was uh, an awesome ride there from uh, Luke Stedman. Did you see that airy tried at the end? You know, a series of nice turns. Um, we don't have the scores in front of us at the moment, but I think it's safe to say that Bruce had a pretty solid lead before this ride of uh, Luke Stedman. He's trying to fight back in the seat, and he had a couple of series of nice turns here from the Australian surfer. Yeah, I think Bruce actually got a wave as well. And uh, if, if you look at the replay right here, Mike, and uh, you can see he's he's looking really on today, Bruce. Yeah, his board looks like he's looking great. Looks like he's uh, really, no, not digging well. And right there, he just punts and just kicks the tail over the top of the wave. Just what an exciting uh, maneuver there to finish that wave. Yeah, you just never know what Bruce is going to do. He's one of those surfers that um, I think we commented yesterday when uh, he was – surfing with Chris Warder the other day that you just don't know what they're going to do. That was a great backside error from Bruce. Uh, didn't even go into his top two ways, but um, now we watch Luke Stedman here, Dino. Nice little snap off the top from uh, the young Australian Luke Stedman as he floats that section right there, and that's that was an interesting turn there. He, he opted to throw get one maneuver more in on that wave, Mike, and you can see how he, you know, he's projecting down the line. This wave's always moving down the line. It's really, really fast. I like that second turn he did. Like you said, he, he threw it up there really quick. You can, let's see what he does here. Flying down. He goes for the big air here. Grabs it. Oh, such a good try. Almost landed on the lip and almost stuck that. Exactly the type of wave he was looking for uh, to uh, go back into the lead. Looked like he is on that last turn. He, uh, he started out with really good technique, but then he... He seemed like his board got away with him. His board got away from him just a little, huh? Yeah, whereas Bruce's air, he looked like he was right over the top of his board. It's amazing. It, yeah, it, it's incredible the uh, the difference of between making those and not. I mean, so close as we finally got our scores up online here. And just like we sort of called there, Dino, Bruce with a 9.17, the conditions have changed. We knew that was going to be an excellent wave. He's backed it up with a 4.67. He's got a very commanding lead here. Luke Stedman needs a combo of two waves. Um, and your time's down to two minutes, so Bruce Iron's looking really good to go into the next round. And how's that? Do you know he's going to meet Joel Parkinson if he does? Here goes Luke Stedman. Well, there, there, there goes Luke uh, Stedman out the back, and a nice little snap off the top. Another little snap off the top as he's pumping down line. Great uh, camera angles here, Mike. And oh, <laughs> looks like uh, just a yeah. He goes for the air there. He's a little bit frustrated there. You know, the wave didn't quite cooperate. Closed out on him halfway through. So. Bruce Iron's looking really good at the moment to advance into uh, round four. And how's that clash going to be already <laughs> oh, in round four? You got Bruce against Joel. And uh, I think Bruce beat Joel at the Somewhere in Mexico event, uh, if I'm not mistaken, already this year. So it's, Joel will be looking for a bit of uh, payback. Yeah. You know, I, I think it was a little tube fest down in Mexico there. And, um, you know, depending on the conditions, but... You know, they're, they're definitely going to um, try to figure out a different strategy, you know, if the waves are more turnable or barrels or whatever it might be. Yeah, that's that's going to be incredible. Here's, we watch the replay. Here goes Luke Stedman from Australia, up and riding, comes off the bottom, quick snap off the top, really quick, nice series of turns here, flying down the line. Look at all the speed he's generated on this wave. And then he gets, you know, a little frustrated there, the wave closes out. And now we're back to live action. Luke Stedman up and riding, Dino. Uh, looks like... Unfortunate for, for Luke at this at this point he's in a combination situation needing 13.85 points with 
under uh, 40 seconds remaining. There's Bruce Irons up, up out the back. Nice upside down floater. <laughs> he goes down. So Bruce having a bit of fun now. He's got the seat wrapped up. Time. Well, you know. Yeah. You, you need a combination with uh, 20 seconds to go. That's, that's uh, even. Uh, no, I've never seen anyone come back under a minute in a combo spot. Yeah, it's it's uh, pretty much impossible, especially with uh, under a minute left. Yeah. It's, I saw Tom Kern come back once in France uh, with about a minute and a half when he needed a combo and make it. I've also <laughs> seen uh, C.J. Hobgood do it once with very little time left. So you see Luke Stedman there from Australia. Unfortunate for him, uh, really good surfing from him, but uh, Bruce Irons 